Hello all you out there in YouTube land, this is Trans8010 and I'm back with another action figure review. I'm... This is my first video that I am shooting that is done post the Q&A and I would like to say thank you for all of the questions and uh, I hope you all were really satisfied with my answers. Um, I am reading some of them as of right now. It's my goal to actually answer all of them right there on the comments page because that's how much I adore you guys. If it wasn't for you, my little little hobby just it wouldn't be as as interesting. And uh, I have with you a very interesting action figure for you from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line in 1991. The basic series. Here he is, the militant mutant mole of dirt bag. There we go. Still have some framing issues here, but once again, I'll fix that in due time. Okay, dirt bag, of course, is uh, kind of ha has a very uh, interesting history. He first appeared in the original cartoon back in uh, 1991 during the uh, prime time episode airing of. T of, uh, what was it, uh, Planet of the Turtleoids. That would, of course, later be split into two parts. Uh, he was a mutant mole that was mutated by Shredder to, you know, go against the turtles. He and his buddy Groundchuck then rebel against Shredder and they do whatever the heck they want. He was also featured as a boss in the sequel to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video game franchise, Released in the, on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, I believe it was Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project. A game that I've only played a couple of times. I don't own and I'm really sad because I heard it's a really, really great game. Anyway, Dirtbag is possibly one of my favorite uh, original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Just because of all the detail that goes into them. He's an anthropomorphic, I think I got that right, uh, mole. He looks like he's seen, <laughs> it looks like he's seen hell. Let's just, let's just look at that. He's got a tattered up, uh, black, uh, pants. I would say that they're denim, but just the way that the, uh, torso is all very shiny and a very gloss black paint. It could be leather, you never know. But I'm pretty sure it's either a denim or a corduroy pants. It's torn out in the knee, it's torn out pretty much from the uh, knee down on his right leg. And of course it's torn out from where the tail emerged. The tail has also got this very nice bandage that is wrapping this flesh wound. Wow. Just imagine if that was painted. He has some very nice detail that really, really, really is striking. Like the uh, jaws clamp here. I mean, the, 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 the bite marks here are just really incredible. He's got another flesh wound here. I mean, this one's just a tort, like someone just tore into him with a knife. He also has some very nice overalls that are... Uh, in a uh, nice army camo that's also torn here, of course, and a red belt completes the ensemble. He also has some workers' gloves with the uh, fingers, of course, torn out. And his complete with a miner's cap, complete with searchlight. Oh, also the boots. Another thing that was very interesting, one thing that led to this figure's charm for me, of course, is he actually has stepped on a bug. He has stepped on a spider. Awesome. Give a look the uh, crazy, I'm gonna kill you stare of Dirtbag. This is one mean, mean son of a gun. Now, just because a lot of his details isn't painted doesn't mean that that deters from him at all. It really doesn't. At least they got his tattoo painted. He loves his mommy. He is another one of those very overtly muscular uh, 
Masters of the Universe type of sculpts that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are famous for, and he has some very decent articulation. Well, like I said, decent, not phenomenal. He can move his head, but of course, since his uh, neck joint is not on top, but more forward, he moves his head pretty much around. So, once again, it's another one of those figures that looks kind of ridiculous if you turn his head all the way around. He has added wrist joints here and a swivel arm here. Of course, he rotates with the shoulders, and he's got a ball jointed. Actually, is it a ball joint? Yeah, I think it is a ball joint. A ball jointed uh, hips. So he's got the traditional seven points that all Ninja Turtle action figures have, but because of his tail, he adds another one for, uh, of course, for the movability of his tail, which is also a plus, and also aids in a lot of his... Uh, a lot for his posability. Of course, with all Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he does have some very nice tunneling tidbits, accessories, whatnot. Very character appropriate. Since he is a miner, he does have a rat pack, a miner's pack, for burrowing bad boys on the go. And he can have this chisel knife, this wedge and weapon in one fits nicely inside the hole. Very nice. With his survival rations, this rat trap, and of course this uh, ch chewed on uh, shovel. These accessories are really, really neat. And another thing, this pegs into the back of him like so, and they really didn't need to do this, but because it was Playmates, they actually added some detail to the back of the pack, and I just love it. Uh-oh, just drop it. I mean, the belt buckle, the tour in the uh, sleeping bag where the shovel is forced through. Very, very nice. And of course, it just pegs in like so. He also has his uh, four pointed pick. Just a regular old pick. Nothing new, nothing fancy, but it does have some scoring on it. And of course, that can also fit. And I think it's more or less supposed to fit into the back and it nuzzles in really nicely. And now we have the Jackhammer gun. Hammers more than, than just people named Jack. Yeah, I'm getting all these from the card. Sue me. This is one of those really interesting imaginative type weapons. Now, in this day and age, it would actually probably shoot out the jack and it would be really oversized. But here, kids had to use their imagination. So you can either use it as a jack, like so, or hold on to the handle right here. And now you have a really cool looking rifle. And that is Dirtbag. He is kind of rare for the Ninja Turtles, because as I can remember correctly, he wasn't as popular. Remember, 1991, the, the Turtles' popularity was starting to dwane a little bit. The core audience that grew up with the show since its inception in 87 and collected the toys was now starting to grow up. Although you had fans like me that was born in 1987, 1991 was really when I started getting into the hobby, and this was one of those figures that I absolutely adored when I opened a, one Christmas morning. Um, he, so mint on card, he's going to cost a lot, maybe about, you know, 50, 60 bucks. Uh, loose with all the accessories, even the chisel knife, you got to remember to look for the chisel knife. It's very small and really, really easy to lose. Uh, probably like 15, maybe 20. You may get lucky now because I think I've seen a couple of them for less than 10. But since I already have mine, I really don't need to uh, purchase another one. And before I go, let's take a look at his card art. Because after all, a lot of people love that I show these cards. It's your typical uh, green on brick. You know, green on brick. And from the 1991 cards, I don't know if I showed a 1991 card, 
they're, they're really starting to look more like the toys, and there's not as much artistic freedom. Although they really do look nice, I really love the cards from 89 just a little bit more, just because they have a more almost abstract look to them. This one's more straight on. There's a lot of detail in them, and I love it. But, okay, what we have here is, uh, actually I did do cards from 1991. I did the uh, Rockin' and Rollin' Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was sick. I might be able to do another one of those just to show the four together. Just because that seems to be one of the videos I'm not really proud of. I'm not going to change it or anything, I'm just not proud of it. So we have uh, Splinter, Creepy Crawling Splinter, who was released the previous year for the Wacky Action Series. And we have Dirtbag with his chisel knife about ready to stab good old Splinter. Of course, he's got his, uh, about ready to do an inside block. Also, we have, uh, Dirtbag, and he is just using that pick to hack away at the Ninja Turtles logo. And I love it when the characters interact with the logo. A lot of the bad guys, you really see them hacking away at this logo. And then you have I'll Bury You Alive, the main profile of Dirtbag, using his uh, jackhammer rifle to uh, chip away at some rock. Very, very nice. Of course, you have the more traditional explosion. So, that is the card for uh, Dirtbag. Another thing I also like to mention, I will put this down in the comments below, his uh, clip and connect, or his clip and collect, shows that he's actually an arch enemy of Splinter. Although this was never really shown in the series. It was just a advertising gimmick to sell, you know, to, to sell the toys. You know, show Dirtbag, show what he can do for the audience, and then move on. Just like I'm doing right now. <laughs> show, the, show the toy, <laughs> feature his gimmicks, and then move on. This is Transato10, and I am signing off.